Hi guys, this is Josh from Pomeroy Creative. Today I'm going to make a new resource for myself and I'd like to show you both the process and the tools that I'm going to use. Now, I'm working a lot with Google Drawings as you may have seen in my other videos, but one of the things that it doesn't have and none of the Google Drive apps have are drop shadows or layer effects of, or styles really of any kind. Now there's some great image options for changing a color or the transparency of a photo, which is really great and actually pretty powerful. But no way to apply a drop shadow within these web apps. So I'd like to show you a tool that I like to use to generate uh, PNG images that have an alpha channel, which means it's a transparent uh, color. And uh, there's basically only two things that you need to be able to create just about any sort of drop shadow. And I'd like to show you in this little video. Okay, so I'm in my little resources folder. This is just full of little icons and things that I've been collecting and converting into uh, vectors that I can use inside of Google Drawings. And I'm just going to create a new document. And this is going to be a, um, a, a document that's going to hold these uh, gradient images, uh, these PNGs that I can access anytime. So the tool is, it's angrytools.com gradient image maker. Okay, And what we want to create is basically just something that goes from black, solid black, to completely transparent. And this will uh, allow us to do quite a lot of things. So we can create a linear one first. And this is really useful, um, and I'll show you why in just a second. So what I'm going to do with this online tool, this is just a free website, is I'm going to put the angle at 90 degrees. So the, uh, the black is just starting right here at the top and going all the way down to transparent. And I'm going to change that blue to black, just right here in the colors. So you click on the little, st the little swatch uh, color stops to change the color and uh, I want those both to be black but uh, the uh, transparency stop is up here and I'm just going to move that transparency stop up to about five percent right there then just make sure that um, there won't be a hard edge here when I generate this image and so what I'm going to do here in the width and height is I'm just going to put in 900 um, and I can actually get away with stretching this PNG quite a bit. So 900 is going to be plenty of resolution for me for a lot of things. If I ever needed something bigger, I could type in something bigger here and generate a new PNG image. So I'm going to do 900 by 900 pixels. And I'm going to click Generate Image. And it's going to generate this, this big square gradient right down here. And what I can simply do is right-click, Copy Image, and go back over to my Google Drawings and do a command V to paste it right in here. And I can shrink it down to size if I'd like. Now really, this is all I would really need to get to get by with because I could always flip this image, which I'll do here. I'll drag a duplicate by holding Alt. And then I can just go to the Arrange Tools, Rotate, Flip Vertical. So now I've got the inverse of that. So it goes from dark to light, from bottom to top. Um, or I could generate a new image from here by just simply changing the, uh, the, the stops here, basically reversing them. So I want the completely opaque one all the way on this side, all the way to the left, and the transparent one up here, and I'm going to go down to 95. It just, again, gives me a little bit of room here to uh, make sure that I don't get a hard edge. Okay, and then I'm going to generate that image. Just so you know that you could do this both ways and actually have a separate image for this. Okay. I'm just going to shrink that down again. All right. The next uh, sort of tool that we're going to make or a gradient image that we're going to be able to use on a lot of things is a radial gradient.
and we can change that right here in the orientation, this little drop down, we can change it to radial. And you see already we've got a radial gradient. Now this one I've, I've tested out and it does bleed to the edges quite a bit. And so I take this, um, the, uh, the, the transparency stop, I take this one down just about to 65. 70 might be okay. Let's try 70. Again, 900 by 900 pixels. I'm going to click Generate Image. Okay, so that gives us a nice, smooth gradient. Dark in the middle, out the transparent. And we could create a few of these if we'd like. If I move the, the slider here, this black slider, um, you see I can make one that's darker in the center. So I might make one like that, maybe go up to 15% with that. Uh, let's copy this one first. So I'm just going to copy the image again, go over here and paste it in. So you see how that's, that's transparent. Uh, it's, it's opaque in the center and then goes out to become just totally transparent at the edge. So let's generate this one. This one's going to be a little heftier in the center with the black. And uh, again, just goes out to totally transparent. Okay, and I'm just resizing these. I'm holding shift while I do this to constrain the proportions. So you see how these are quite different uh, shadows. Go ahead and make these two a little bit smaller too. Get them all the same size. Okay, that's good. So I have one that's uh, a little bit more gradual. See, it starts smaller in the center and goes out gradually. And this one that has a, a, a little bit bigger base of black in the center and goes out. And you can continue on creating gradients like this as many as you'd like. But I find that these are the most useful for me, just a radial gradient and a linear gradient. Okay, so here's my little tool set now of shadows. And I'm just going to plop these in the middle and uh, call this my shadows. Gradient shadows, maybe. Gradients. So now I'd like to show you how I go about using some of these. Um, I'll open up a illustration here. Let's see. This one's good. I've already used one on this, but I'll show you how to do it again. Do, do, do. Open this up. Okay, so here's an apple, and you see that um, it actually has a little shadow that uh, gives it almost the illusion of it sitting on a counter or sitting on something. So if I move that off, you can see it's just a um, it's just a radial gradient, and I've squished it down. And if I draw in a square here, I can get this back to its original orientation. And so you see it, it was uh, originally just a perfect circular uh, radial gradient. And so let's use some of the ones that I just created. Here's another radial gradient. I can paste it right in here. So I just copied and pasted it now from my resource folder, move it to the back, and now I can start squashing it down. And then, so, so what I'm doing is I'm foreshortening the shadow. And I can position it kind of where I where I'd like, where I think the light's hitting it. Maybe it's hitting it from, well, I see, I see this brightest spot here, so the light must be coming a little bit from the, the right and the front, and it's also darker on this left-hand side, so my shadow's going to be a little heavier on the left-hand side and push it a little bit to the back, something like that. So again, in the image options, I have control over the transparency of the shadow or really the, the intensity of that shadow. So I can make it very subtle or I can make it all the way, um, you know, 100% transparent, which already goes to, um, or 100% opaque, 0% transparent, and which would just be what we created in the Angry Tools uh, Gradient Image Maker. So that's using that, that uh, radial gradient. Let's use a linear gradient. Now the linear gradient is really useful for 
uh, giving a, a drop shadows to both sort of uh, square or menu items. Let, let me show you. So if I had like a, a little heading bar here, or even if it was, this was an image, it could be, it really could be anything. But it's got hard edges, right? It's a, it's a rectangle. Um, you'll see this often in like uh, the, the navigation menu of a website. So I'm going to paste in my, my radial gradient. And you see this one goes from dark to light. And what I want it to do is go from light to dark. And so I can simply reverse it by going to arrange, rotate, flip vertically. I could have just grabbed the other one. That would have saved me one little step. But if I just stretch this out like this, you see already I've got this. This is now a very thick, uh, heavy drop shadow. I could put it behind this... Um, sort of just this rectangle this kind of header bar and now you see it's a little bit more it's a little bit more subtle uh, if i move this off you see exactly what it's doing it's just that that uh, rate or linear gradient underneath this box now so if i squish this down even uh, as long as it's behind that shape you see that it, it doesn't have uh, it looks like it's it's casting a shadow so I could have a short shadow, I could have a really long shadow, and it could go all the way down. Now it's basically making this look like the background is a linear gradient that goes from black to green, when it really it's just a PNG stretched out. Um, I, could, I could make it really nice and tight if I'd like. Maybe I'm doing some web design, and I, I even want to have just the shadow um, right at the edge of this piece. So with that image selected, I can up the transparency. Let's go back to 50%. And I can group that shadow with my rectangle, put it into a group, and I can move it around. And you see how that looks? It's like, it's like uh, Google's paper. So it's a drop shadow. I've made a drop shadow just with a transparent, uh, a semi-transparent PNG gradient. And uh, so I could duplicate this. Now I've got some, some sort of bones that I can play with. So maybe this is the uh, the header navigation or the app menu. And then down here, there could be a, a card and I could make this card bigger. So all I did was select the rectangle inside of this group and drag the top part of it up. Um, I could put this beneath the uh, the sort of header bar there and so let's move this apple out of the way so you see how now we have like kind of this cascading effect and I could continue doing this and I've got that that little shadow that helps separate my my elements or my 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 boxes things that maybe can could contain some content um, there's a lot of stuff that you could do with just these two gradients. So uh, give it a give it a try. Uh, AngryTools.com. You can just also do a Google search for uh, gradient PNG uh, generator, and that's how I found this this tool. It's a really great tool, and there's a lot more that you can do with it. So if you wanted to have like a color gradient, and you wanted something to go from green to blue or green to yellow or whatever you want, you can do that in this too, and then just stretch it out to your canvas. Now, you will get a little bit of sort of um, uh, banding um, or um, people call it different things. But say I, I expand this out to the, the full size of the canvas. Let me change the background here. Here you can't see it too bad, but maybe if I change the colors, you'll be able to see it. There's just a little bit of banding. Um, in the in the gradient, but Photoshop has that too. So uh, doesn't really matter um, what you what you use, and you could make this image generate the image larger, and that may that may help. But I don't think that's necessarily a resolution issue as much as as it, as it is the 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 gradient itself is just going to to cause some of that on screen. Um, so I'm just going to get this back kind of where it was. Okay, I think it was something like that. 
But again, you see sort of the, the usefulness of these uh, small PNG images, and you can you can use them on all kinds of things. Um, if you have a text box, you can give it now a little drop shadow with one of these linear gradients. Um, you can make something appear as if it's sitting on a table or a counter by using one of the uh, the radial gradients and again doing the foreshortening. So I just grab one of the bottom or top handles, and as I as I uh, push in, I'm holding um, Option or Alt to uh, to size it proportionally in that vertical axis. So I could even just create a, a circle. And by putting it on just this radial gradient, um, I, I, it, it almost uh, gives the illusion of this being a sphere rather than, rather than a circle. It has a little bit of weight now with just that little bit of shadow. And so you can, you can really tweak these to, to make them a little bit more subtle and, and uh, realistic. And to get a hang of what, what looks right, just look at things in real life and how shadows fall and uh, where they're positioned um, and what the light in the room is doing to make it happen like that. So I hope that's uh, helpful to you. Try some, some PNGs with this gradient technique to get some nice looking shadows into your Google drawings. You could also use this in your Google Slides or, or your presentations to give some depth um, or weight to something in your, um, in your Google presentations. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. And please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more, for more videos like this. Bye for now.